Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator, where today we're driving a cruise ship. This is the SS France. Originally built as an ocean liner in the 1960s, the ship was later sold to Norwegian Cruise Line, who gave it a modern refit and operated it until 2005. This simulated version is part of the ocean liner's ship pack, which is available on flightsim.to for around 20 euros. Today, we're taking one of the shortest cruises in the world just over 100 nautical miles from the UK to France. Our route in the world map starts just outside Southampton docks. We can't start in the dock itself because the water surface is buggy as heck. As we leave the channel, we'll pass Portsmouth, then make a right turn around the Isle of Wight. The crossing itself is a straight line, followed by some manoeuvres to bring us into the port at Le Havre. I don't know whether we'll actually be able to traverse the surface in the dock, but we'll find out for sure. Our journey starts as we leave Southampton at a steady 40-ish knots, with an expected arrival time of two hours from now. The ship's systems use the built-in GPS, which means that world map flight plans transfer to the ship, and it's easy to check your progress. At this point, a quick review of the ship itself. Although you can sail across the ocean from real-life port to real-life port, the physics of the ship are very much on the arcade side. The only controls available are a throttle and rudder. Bow and stern thrusters aren't modelled, so there's no lateral translation unless you use slew mode. The rudder itself has a turn rate that would embarrass any modern ship with azimuth thrusters, let alone an old ocean liner. It needs to be dialed down by at least 10 to 20 times. The ship also requires hands-on sticks throughout the journey, as there's no autopilot and rudder trim is far too sensitive. Total journey time today is around 2 hours, which is significantly quicker than the journey in real life, where the average speed is 12 knots, with a trip time of circa 10 hours. The ship itself is also unrealistically fast by about 10 knots, but like most things in MSFS, this add-on is all about the visual experience. That is, reproducing real-world journeys with realistic and recognisable scenery, physics be damned. The sun sets during our journey, and we arrive at the port just after dark. I did find the lack of autopilot and heading hold modes to be a bit of a pain. In fact, I actually increased the sim rate for some of the trip as I couldn't face manually driving for two hours straight. To my surprise, we're actually able to get into the dock at Le Havre all the way through the entrance to the harbour, right up to the cruise terminal itself. As soon as we're lined up at the terminal, I hit active pause before the ship gets dragged into the scenery by the slightly dodgy terrain, and drop the visual anchor and mooring lines. Despite the obvious flaws of trying to simulate ships in a flight simulator, it's still entirely possible to complete your favourite seafaring journeys and enjoy the experience. So. MSFS is clearly a pretty terrible ship simulator, and if you're looking for a good one, I'd recommend the classic Ship Simulator Extremes from 2012. However, the nautical add-ons for MSFS, coupled with the simulator's photorealistic scenery, allow you to traverse the most stunning ports in the world, such as the one in Norway shown here, from the comfort of your home. And surely that's worth $20, right? Thanks for watching, I hope you found this entertaining. If you did, please drop a like, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.